Go.
place him. Uh, you can't have a church without you. Uh, so we just want to let you know you're welcome, welcome, welcome up in here. As you to bless this service, Heavenly Father. Bless the word that's coming from the heavens, Heavenly Father. That it will break our souls and be like a twin sword, Heavenly Father. That will direct and direct and instruct. We say thank you for everything you've done, you're doing, and you will do. And we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
our very own Deaconess Keisha Burgess has a birthday on the 18th. Yeah. Denise Burgess has a birthday. <laughs> Keisha will say how young she is. <laughs> uh, Lisa Moore has a birthday, one of our new loves in the church. Amen. And Minister Frederick has a birthday this week. Amen. So know that your church family loves you, but God loves you best. <clears throat> Mother Murray, one of the mothers of the church, her homegoing service will be on July, excuse me, will be on Friday, July 17th at 10 a.m. It will be at the Spalding Mortuary. Thought for the week. Our pathways often twist through stormy landscapes. But when we look back, but when we look back, Amen. we will see thousand miles of miracles and answered yeah. prayers. Yeah. All further announcements are coming from the Lord. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen, church. Amen. Thank God for another day's journey. We thank God that we're still here in the land of the living. Amen. 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 I thank God for First Antioch Missionary Baptist Amen. Church. Yes. As we said, our eldest, our oldest member, Mother Murray, has transitioned on to glory. 103 years of good living here in this land. Now God has called her and appreciate that ongoing service on Friday. And those that can attend, please see Keisha first, as I know there's a limitation on how many people can attend the service. Amen. But your Amen. prayers, Amen. your prayers are being solicited now for those names that were mentioned. Uh, let us keep the whole church family in prayer. Yes. Amen. I tell you, um, this, this, this thing has been devastating to not only our community, our city, country, and the entire world, but what's even worse is what rumors can do to us. So I, I just want to admonish those. Let's not pass on rumors. Let's stop gossiping. Let's just start praying more. Amen? Amen. 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 So that is uh, the truth of God. And at this time, we want to have our offering. We want to have our offering. We want to receive an offering for the Lord. Amen. Because the Amen. Lord's business is still going forth. Amen. Amen. In the midst of a pandemic, God is still blessing us because we woke up this morning and we still have breath in our bodies, and the Bible has declared to let everything that has breath praise ye the Lord. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we thank God for what he's doing and what he has done in our lives. Here's my offering. I always believe I lead by example that all of us should be running to the, to the chance to put something in the plate for God. Because God knows how to use a blessing and multiply it and bless us even further. So for those of you who are at the or at home with our business and watching us on Facebook Live. And if you haven't done so already, please follow the instructions. The administrative staff has given them. You can do it electronically. And those that have already mailed it, I'm sure the clerk has already received your, your, your check or your offering in the mail. And if you come to court this day, July the 12th, 2020, clearer vision on what a mighty, mighty God we serve. Amen. Amen. I was glad when they said unto me that us, to the house of prayer. It's a privilege to come into the house of prayer. It's an honor. And I just thank God that He's blessed us so that some of us, a remnant, can bless Him, but all of us can worship Him together. Amen. No, 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 Amen. No, no. That's when you the kingdom build that thy will be done with it in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God is good. Thank you for your offerings. Thank you for your gifts. Now it's altar prayer. It's time for those that want to come and stand in the gap for a loved one to come to the altar and give all of our issues, all of our problems to God. The God of heaven who still looks down upon us is available to solve and heal our problems. If we just turn from our wicked ways, if we seek Him, if we look to our Father in heaven, He can, he can bless us, He can heal us. Altar call, those that want to come to the altar, please do so now. Pray. Those of you that are at home, please take on Pray. a humble posture. Bow your heads down, even if you're watching it on Facebook, just for you to demonstrate the humility and understand the awesomeness of God that we will bow down humble submission to him as we cry out to God and come and see about us, Father. Some of you 
children are troubled today. Your children are here. Some of your children are broken hearted. Some of your children are facing homelessness. Father God, all of us are facing yes, brokenness. Sir. And somebody needs to cry out and say, Lord, remember. Remember me. Yes, sir. Yes. 
Father God, bless our children. Touch them, Father God, protect them. Yes. Give them a right mind, Father God. Father God, because I pray, I'm, I'm thinking about Hallelujah. our elders, Father God. Yes. As we get ready to funeralize our elders, Father God, let us Touch be mindful right of our elders. Talk to these young people to be mindful and protect Hallelujah. their elders and their families. Don't bring trouble home, Father God. Tell them, be mindful and, and use their common sense. Yes, Lord. Father God, because I want you to take care of Big Mama and Papa. Yes. Watch out for them, Father God. We're praying for them right now, Lord. Bless is the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Yes. Father God, yes. the main should our schools be opened up. I'm saying open up your mouth and cry out to God that he heals our land. Yes, yes. Looking for Dr. Fauci to have a cure. Know the cure. The cure is found yeah. in Jesus Christ yes, and His blood. Yes, Lord. Heal us, oh Lord. Energize us. Give us a spirit to serve you while we can. Yes. Father God, we don't know the day or the hour you're going to call us. But we do know that everybody is going to have to face you because the Bible says that one day yes. every knee shall bow and every tongue is going to have to confess. And I just like to declare right now while the blood is running warm in my veins that we here at First Antioch, we love the Lord. Yes, Lord. And we are calling out your name until our dying day. Yes, Lord. Thank you for what you're doing Thank in us. Of a pandemic, you're still blessing. Thank you, Father Thank God. Thank you. In of a virus spreading over the world, yeah. you're protecting us. Thank you, Father Thank God. Thank you. all the troubles in the eyes and the seen us. That trouble don't last. Trouble don't last. Give us a new spirit, Father God. Yes, Lord. Invigorate us with your Holy Spirit that we can go forth and do good unto all men. Yes. Teach us again, Father God, how to love the unlovable. Like you loved us so much that you sent your darling son to die in our place. Yes, Lord. But since he got up, Father God, we want to shout and celebrate and say, Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For the good yeah. Thank you for salvation. Thank yes. you, Father God, for strength. Thank you for food. Thank you for watching over us. And then, Lord, as the curtain is drawn in our lives, as, as the sun starts setting in our life, let us find you in peace somewhere around the throne where when you see us upon entry, you say, Well done, thy good. And and thy faithful servant. Yes. We ask blessings now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We ask now for protection in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. We ask for healing right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. We ask for love for this world in Jesus' name. We ask for deliverance right now in Jesus' name. And we celebrate and we shout, Jesus! Amen. 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 Praise your name, Jesus. Yes. Healing in the name of Jesus. Salvation in the name of everything we need in the name of Jesus. This time we ask the department to come and mentor us with selections. Amen. Amen.
find myself having conversation with church folk, us. Yeah, yeah. And I'm deeply concerned yeah, because I find the conversation going like this. The churches are closed. Well. So I can do what I want to do right now. Well. All right, all right. Uh, the, I can't get to like-minded people. I can't get to the pastor like I need to. So mm. I can live any kind of way that I want to. But God woke me up this morning to tell a few folk that don't go back. Well, yeah, don't go yeah. back to where I delivered you from. Yeah, yeah. Don't go back to the people where I delivered you from. Right. Yeah. Today we're going to learn from a few folk who were corrupting themselves by going back. Turn with what? me to the book of Exodus. Exodus, Exodus the 32nd right. chapter. We're going to deal with verses 1 through 8. Let the church say that when we get there. Exodus. The 32nd chapter, verses 1 through 8. Amen. Amen. And the word reads, and when, Moses, and when the people saw that Moses delayed to come down out of the mount, the people gathered themselves together unto Aaron and said unto him, Up, make us gods, which shall go before us. For as for this Moses, the man that brought us up out of the land of Egypt, the, we woke not what is become of him. Well. And Aaron said unto them, Break off the golden earrings, and, and which are in the ears of your wives, your sons, and your daughters, and bring them unto me. And all the people broke off the earrings of which were in their ears, and brought them unto Aaron. And he received them at their hand, and fashioned it with a graving tool, after he had made it a molten calf. And they said, These be thine gods, O Israel which brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. And when Aaron saw it, he built an altar before it. And Aaron made proclamation and said, Tomorrow is a feast to the Lord. And they rose up early tomorrow, on the morrow, and offered burnt offerings and brought peace offerings. And the people sat down to eat and to drink and rose up to play. And the Lord said unto Moses, Go, get thee down, for thine people which thou broughtest out of the land of Egypt have corrupted themselves. They have turned aside quickly out of the way which I commanded them. Yeah, yeah. They have made them a molten calf and were, have worshipped it and have sacrificed unto, thereunto and said, These be thy gods, O Israel, which have brought thee up out of the land of Egypt. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Let me set the scene here. This is God talking to Moses right yeah, here. Yeah. He's talking to Moses about the Israelites, the children of Israel. This is the same Moses that, that went to uh, Egypt with Aaron, who was his brother, the spokesman of Moses, who because Moses had a speech impediment. So Aaron was his spokesman. God gave them a simple message to tell King Pharaoh. We know the story. He said, tell him to let my people go. Upon him delivering his people out of the land of Egypt, uh, he told them, you understand, to go to your neighbors and, yeah, and they yeah. get gold. But bring your, your gifts with you when I get you out of this land right here. So here they are. They're in the wilderness now. Yeah. God is showing up and he's showing out all throughout the wilderness. He's, he's fed them. He's given water. He split the Red Sea. Here they are coming up to this mountain called Sinai. Here, the people murmured, like a lot of us do. God has blessed us. He's brought us a long way. We find ourselves still murmuring no matter what God. He healed our bodies. He, he, he kept us overnight. He woke us up this morning. But this morning, some of us haven't even said thank you, Jesus. Some of us haven't even said thank you, Lord, for what you did for me and my family. God is looking for some folk right now in 2020 to worship him and lift him up. Here, they are at this Mount Sinai. And he told Moses, he said, look, these people here, I want them to know who I am. I want them to know how great and powerful I am. Yeah, yeah. I want to speak to you. And when I speak to you, they're going to believe you. They're going to follow you. They're going to hear everything you have to say. So come on up to this mountain right here. And you're going to know I'm here because the cloud is going to be sitting on this mountain with a fire. And it's going to burn like a furnace. That's when you know I'm going to be here. But look, when you bring the people around yeah. this mountain right here, you must tell them to not touch this mountain, to not enter this mountain, because they will surely die. And God yeah, is speaking yeah. to a few folk this morning. Yes, the churches are closed down. Yes, we can't get into the sanctuary. He said when we open the churches back up, we can't come up here any kind of way anymore. We can't come up here cursing, fighting, and arguing like we used to. He said we can't go back to what we used to do, because these are holy Grounds. Here are the people right now around the mountain right now. And Moses went up into the mountain. 
God was speaking to Moses and giving him the law. Upon him speaking to Moses and giving him the law, uh, it, the people heard uh, God speaking to Moses. Uh, they said they heard a thunder. <clears throat> they heard lightning because that's what God, that's what it sounded like when God was speaking to him. Here, the thunder came down to the people and uh, the people had said to Moses, look, we don't want to hear from your God no more. We don't want to hear from him because of the simple fact he scares us. We are in fear. The Bible says the people started pack, uh, backing up because they were in fear and they were scared because they heard from God. And if truth be told, some of us today are fearful because we heard right. what God had told us. He told us to get on our side. He told us to go over here and do this. He told us to sing, preach, and teach. But we're scared to do what God has told us to do. I want to tell somebody something. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but he gave us a spirit of power, love, and a sound mind. So what God has told us to do, we must do it. We must walk through the fear. But here, Moses came down and said, look, we don't want to hear from that no more. We want you to talk to God and tell us what it is that, that he, he wants us to do. Moses told him, okay, you want, you, do you believe that God is who he said he is? Huh? Do you, have you accepted him as your Lord and Savior? They said, yeah, we accept him. He said, okay, I'm going to make a covenant between you and God. And it's, and it's something about the blood because he used the blood for the covenant between them. And God tells us somebody to I don't know what's going on in your life, yeah, yeah, yeah. but you all have accepted me as your Lord and Savior, uh -huh. Jesus Christ. And in 2020, huh, you are in danger of slipping back into sin, going back into the things that I have delivered you from. Here, they made a covenant. Huh? As soon as Moses went back into the mountain, they said he was up there for 40 days and 40 nights talking with God. Yes, uh, God was giving him the law. Huh? And here, they go to Aaron. Aaron is the one that's in charge because before Moses left, he said, if you need anything, talk to Aaron right here because Aaron knew her. Huh? He knew the power and, and, and the greatness of God. Huh? So here, as soon as Moses left, the people went to Moses, uh, Aaron and said, hey, you know something? I'm in yes, the word now. He said, look, this yeah, yeah, Moses guy, he's delayed. He's taking too long to come back down. He said, look, we need you to make us a God that can take us on over into the promised land huh? because we just stuck right here. Huh? And, and we don't know what he's doing. We don't know if he's even coming back. Huh? Moses, huh? Moses is the leader here. Huh? Moses is just like some of the leaders that we have right now. Huh? Moses is a, a people pleaser right now. Huh? And make God is telling some pastors, some preachers, huh? it's time out for pleasing people. It's time out for preaching for fortune, fame, and glory. It's time out for yes, preaching for the congregation. It's time out for fattening our pockets on this earth. He said, now is the time when I open up the church for you to preach, thus said the Lord. For yes, you to lead the way I designed you to lead. Here, more Aaron is sitting there. They say, dude, instead of Aaron telling the people, you understand, God had brought you out of Egypt. God had brought you through the wilderness. Do you not see that mountain right there? It's on fire right now. It's crackling. That's the power of God. We must pray right now. We must believe that he is who he say he is. But no. Aaron said, break off the earrings in the ear. Yeah. He said, bring them to me, and I'm going to make you a golden cow. He, they broke them off. They brought it to him. The Bible says he took a graven tool, and they said he made a golden cow. Yeah. Not only did he make a golden cow, he gave it to the people. The people stood up in front of Israel. They said, look, look y'all. These are our gods right here. And, Moses, and Aaron, instead of Aaron uh, rebuking them, the Bible said he built the altar. He said in the morning, we're going to get up, we're going to sacrifice, and then we're going to pray. We're going to pray unto the Lord. We're going to have a feast, then we're going to get up and play. Ah, ah, God is a God that's a jealous God. Yes, he is. God don't need the platform shared with nobody. See, Aaron was trying to play the field right here. He was trying to please the people, but also trying to stay in good terms with God. But God is a God. He said, I'll speak you out of here, lukewarm. You see, Aaron was trying to I was play the field right here and please these people here. I guess he was a little threatened with them. I don't know what the situation is, but I'm going to tell you like this. We cannot be people pleasers. If the people ask us to do something, we don't care if it calls us to, to, to lose some crowds, lose some money, or, or lose some friends. We must yeah. stick to the word of God. Yeah. So, I, 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 I chose God right now. I'm going to follow him. Yeah. Aaron should have led the people straight to God. But instead, he's pleasing them, and he's trying to please God by building an altar. Let me tell you, God see everything at one time. Mm -hmm. He's up there with Moses in the mountain right now. The Bible says he's up there giving Moses the law, huh? And, and he looking, he's talking to Moses, but he's seeing what they're doing down there, huh? Just like some of us, huh? We just does the church of calls, huh? Thinking God is too busy right now, huh? I'm telling you, he's watching everything we do, huh? He's watching see what we're doing right now. They say, oh, the church is closed right now. I haven't heard from God in a while. So therefore, I'm going to do what I want to do, how I want to do it. But God 
said one thing, check it out. I delayed the churches from being open because I want to see who you are. I want to see who you are. I want to test your faith. I want to see if you really love me. I want to see if you really worship me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he watches some of us right now. And we feel miserable because we instead of serving God, we serve in the world. We're giving our gifts to the world. You see, these gifts that, 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 that the Israelites had, these earrings, uh, God had given that to them in Israel, I mean Egypt, because he wanted them to take it to the promised land so he could build his temple. He wanted his temple to be glory. So instead of them using the gifts that he gave them, that he blessed them, they blessed them. They trying to build an idol God with this. Yes, and some of us using our talents and our gifts for the world. And God said, enough is enough. When I open up this church, we got to do a new thing. We got to start worshiping him and lifting him up because that's what we were created to do. All God want to do is just show up and show up. But he can't do it because we want to do it. We want to serve the world and we want to serve the church. God said, we want your land healed. He said, turn from your wicked ways and I'm going to turn from it. He wanted to tell somebody this morning, don't go back. I done delivered you from drugs. I done delivered you from alcohol. I done delivered you from some folk. He said, don't go back to the people. We are in danger of slipping back in the sea. We are in danger of corrupting ourselves. And God is trying to get our attention right now. He said, stop it and start focusing on me and start focusing on the world. Just because the church is closed down, the church is not the building. You are the church. So what are you going to do right now? Are you going to continue to me? Are you going to still continue to study your word? Are you still going to give? Because you are who you are. Oh, God said, he's talking to these people. Israel, he, they done already made a commitment to him. Yes, they done already made a covenant with God. Here, Moses, he said, get, get away from me, Moses. He said, go down there to them people. Because they done laid up there and made them a move, God. Yes, they done already broke the commandment. Yes, already. Yes, the commandment was, thou should not have no other God before me. Yeah. Thou should not build no other idols. They done already broke it, Moses. I'm jealous. You know, some of us, I'll tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to destroy them. Yes, and I'm going to make you a, I'm going to make you a nation by yourself. Huh? Moses went on down there. Huh? Moses was a little angry with him. Moses had met him. He said, look, the people are, 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 are war down there. Sound like war. And uh, Moses said, nah, they part they're having a good time. And God is looking at some of us right now. And instead of us going to war right now, because we are in a spiritual warfare, this is going to be the taking us out. The enemy think he's winning. Instead of us fighting this thing through Jesus, we want to get to join him. Instead, God says, we've got to change our hearts. we got to change our minds. If you want the land to be healed, if you want your body to be healed, if you want your situation to turn around, he said you must start worshiping him with heart, truth, heart, and soul. He wants us to turn to him, and we want to lift him up because he wants to show up and heal the land. He wants to show up and show that he's God, and he's God alone. Because we were in Egypt, all of the ten plagues that he performed in their face were ten gods that he was showing that I'm greater than y'all. They were serving locusts. They were serving frogs. They were serving the sun. He made it go dark. He said, I'm God and I'm God alone. Y'all know what I did for y'all. Some of us, we know what God is and who he is. All he wanted us to do is turn from our wicked ways and start repenting and focus on him. It's the stuff going to change in our life. It's the stuff going to change in our land. He said, I'm going to stop focusing on me. I want you to tell somebody who I am. Tell them how great I am. Tell them the good news. Let them know that my son, Jesus Christ, came from the heavens above. He carried that cross with Calvary. Let them know that they nailed his hands. Let them know that they pierced his side. Let them know that they nailed his feet. And they lifted him up. And then he died. He was put in a borrowed tomb. But three days later, he got up. Three days later, he got up with all power in his hands. And the seat on the right hand of the Father. Get right, church. Don't go back to the way you never serve. He brought us a mighty, mighty one. Yeah. 
building by next Saturday, he said it could be a McDonald's. Amen. But we are the church. Amen. The problem I see is that some of our temples, some of our bodies are just like Burger King. We, we want it our own way. We, we slip back. God, I don't have to worship God. I don't have to get dressed for church. I don't have to pay my tithes anymore. Well, the devil is a lie. And we have to declare for us not to, not to go back. Maybe think about Lot's wife when he told her, don't look back. That's right. I don't know about you, but too much salt is bad for our blood pressure. That's right. That's right. So we need to be looking forward. So now is the time for somebody that's, that knows they've slipped back into darkness. That knows they've moved back into their old lifestyle. They, they moved back with people that don't mean them no good. They right, started right. doing bad habits again, but God had delivered us from those habits. Now is the yeah. time to come to the God and the doors of the church are open for the acceptance of members and by letter of Christian experience of those that want baptism or those that know that I need a special anointing and that want to cry to God, God, here am I standing in the need of, of prayer and redemption. I need to be cleansed from the inside out. Well, Lord, I, I failed you on every on every side. Father God, I used an excuse and I made an excuse to get closer to the Father God, I've, I've neglected my duties at the church. Yeah. Father God, I stopped supporting the church financially. I stopped supporting the church uh, spiritually. I, I haven't prayed for my neighbors. I, I haven't called out anybody that's on the prayer list. I, 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 I've, just, I've just been in my own world, Father God. It's been about me, myself, and I, Lord, I need you to bless me. I need you to save me. I need you to help me to convince my own self that I need you more than you need me. The doors of the church are open. And there's someone that's listening to us now that that have a confession in your heart that's going to be honest with yourself. Because remember, one day, it's going to be judgment day. You know, we don't just get to die and take leisure. Once we die, then comes judgment. And God is going to judge us for everything done in this body. And you know you haven't done what God has called you to do. You've been ordained to have a position in His church. You've been given a title in His church. You've been asked to pay a tithe in His church. And you've neglected that for three, four months because of some disease that God is bigger than. Now is the time to come back to the Lord. The doors are open for except bringing you back because we don't want you to go back. And the good news is you ain't got to stay back. You can come up right now in your spirit and say, God, Lord, I repent of that sin. Lord, create me a clean heart and renew a right spirit. Lord, Make me whole again. Lord, I want to be right. Lord, help me. Lord, save me. And you confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that he is Jesus, the Son of God, who died on the cross and God raised him on the third day. You'll be saved. Yes. And you utter those things in your mouth and then believe it in your heart. I believe that the Bible says that you're saved right now. And we thank God for you. For you not being so stubborn. Because as I read on in that story, God said to Moses that those people are hard neck people. They don't want to hear the truth. They don't want the preacher to tell them that the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God. Won't you open up your gift this morning and repent of your sin and come to God and say, Lord, I'm sorry. Yeah. Clean me up, Father God, so I don't sin against you anymore. Wash me with high stuff, Father. Make me clean again. We love the Lord and we love his word. We thank God for his messenger who wasn't afraid to step out of trying to be popular, trying to be politically correct, and just uttering the word. What does the word say? The only thing that's going to save us in these last evil days is the word of God. Yes. And his word is the prescription for all the ills of the world. But we're going to be correct. We're going to practice our social distancing. We're going to wear our masks when we're out in public, but we need to pray every day. Yeah, we yeah. need to pray not just for ourselves, yeah, yeah, not just yeah. for our families. We need to pray for one another. Yeah. In the name of Jesus, and we ask for it in Jesus' name. Yeah. Right, maybe you have to pray. Me, yeah, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you bring wholeness to first Antioch and all yeah, our family yeah, and our friends yeah, yeah. right now. Right. Whatever we stand in need of, I ask in the name of right. Jesus that yeah. you deliver right now, Lord. Right now. Whatever we are lacking, I ask yeah. in the name of Jesus yes, Lord. that you give us what we need, Father God. Yes, sir. Yeah. Father God, thank you thank for you. what you have done. Thank you for what we have heard. Yes. Yes. Bless you in your word. Yes. Yes. Family, first Sandy, we miss you. Yes. Amen. The church officers have set the church up in such a way 
that we can obey the social distancing, somebody needs to come back home. Yeah. Yes. I know it's comfortable to be in your house shoes and your robe and, and drink it from your favorite cup of coffee. But I want you to come taste and see how yes. sweet the Lord is. Yes. We have rooms. Uh, I need to see the officers in their positions. I need to see all of the worshipers in their positions. Yes. We have all the necessities to be obedient to what the CDC has prescribed. But I'd rather be obedient to God. Yes. 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 And we'll see you again next week.